In this video I'll be running a side by side comparison of the same flight in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 with and without high quality map data to determine the amount of data consumption this game uses and if someone with a data cap could run it and enjoy it. Taking a look at our settings we can see the two settings that I'll have on or off for each flight. The Bing World Graphics streams high quality satellite imagery to give a nice crisp looking texture to the land we're flying over which helps the game populate buildings foliage, roads, and bridges more accurately. Then we have something called photogrammetry, which interprets pictures of the city to give them even more detail. Photogrammetry wasn't available in all cities, and last I heard, it was only in 40-ish locations in the game, but New York City is one of them, so I chose that as our flight plan. I will be using a rolling cache, but clearing it before each flight except for a final flight to find out how much downloading it saves us. And now looking at our two flights, we can see a difference in quality, but also bandwidth usage. Loading in took about a minute and a half for each flight, but the low data flight used about a megabyte, while the high data flight used about 160. Just a side note, Microsoft measures consumption with megabytes, which are similar but smaller than megabytes. I still choose to say megabyte because I like them more and there's not that much of a difference. Flying in towards the city, you can tell which looks more realistic, but the low data flight still looks great if you didn't have the option to use more bandwidth. The textures on the buildings are a lot more generic and lighter in the left flight. I also took consideration to fly with clear skies and at the same time of day. Even with this said, you can see the difference in the Empire State Building, even though it's the same model. You can also see that the buildings on the left are just placeholders, while the buildings on the right are the actual shape and size. The other thing to note is the foliage. On the left flight there is very little to none, and on the right flight there is a ton of foliage. Now, when taking into consideration the amount of bandwidth you're using, this whole flight took about 3 minutes and 10 seconds, and the left flight only used about a half a megabyte, while the right flight used over 600 megabytes. And that's not even including the load. The left flight is now a lot more viable for people with data caps and can easily fly in this game. It's also good to consider anybody with a full house with low speeds that have people using data for video streaming or downloads of their own. Considering longer flights, that's going to be about 1 megabyte per hour for our left flight and that's going to be about 1 gigabyte per 5 minutes for our right flight. In all though, if you have to sacrifice data for this game, you can easily still play and enjoy it. However, if you do have some room in your data cap and you wanted to fly over the high quality version of New York, you can still do that. It's going to take the same amount to load and fly initially, but if you wanted to repeat that flight process, it's actually going to take you less if you have it cached on your drive. After my high data flight, I loaded back in and did the same flight. The load this time only took 3 megabytes. And as you can see, it retained all of the previous beauty. This time, the flight only used 16 megabytes. So, if you did have a data cap but had a little room in it, and you wanted to experience the high quality flight over New York City, you could load into it one time, run your flight, use up all that data, and then load back into it and not have to use much more in order to keep exploring around the same area. At the end of the day, with or without a data cap, and using high or low data consumption, you can still enjoy this game. I hope this has helped anybody that was curious about how much data this game actually uses, and thanks for watching guys.